Next question is from Big Turk AZ. What's your take on intra workout food and drinks? What are the benefits to incorporating them and what are some good options? So overrated. Yeah, you know, you know where intra so intra workout food or drinks would be like those gel cubes that you'll see runners eating or a carbohydrate drink or supplement companies love you. Yeah. Yes, yes they do. And now, if you're doing look, here's a deal. Studies will show there's value in them. But it's really specific, like long, the, grueling yes. workouts. If I was, listen, I, if you're the average person who's trying to change body composition, which I would say is 80 to 90% of the people listening to the podcast, and you're working out for waste of time yeah. gives a shit about it. If you're a Spartan racer, ultra marathon runner, tremendous value. Because yeah. at, you know, mile 17 or something, you're going to be completely, you're going to hit a wall mm -hmm. if you don't refuel during that process. But the it is it's become uh, so grossly uh, populated or overpopulated in the uh, bodybuilding community that I used to just laugh about it. It was yeah. like the most comical thing I would see with my peers carrying around these bags and having to stop like midway to shove a bar in their mouth or drink their blue hyper blue colored drink real quick. And it was just like, <laughs> really? Come no, on. It's 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 if you have if you're gonna work out for like two hours or more and it's grueling and it's hard. You may have some value uh, in doing this. Otherwise, not really. I, I tell you what, if you want to drink something during your workout that might actually make a difference, it's not carbohydrates and protein. It's electrolytes, sodium, for example. Mm -hmm. That actually will make a difference <clears throat> within the next 10 minutes. Um, carbohydrates, not really. If, you're, if I've got plenty of stored glycogen and I'm not going to burn it in the hour workout that I'm going to do, which is probably... I'm probably not going to burn it unless I'm really, really super low calorie or whatever. It's got to take the most intense workout to, to burn all your yeah. glycogen stores. No, it's not going to do anything for you, and it's a, it's a total waste of time. If I'm doing a long ass, which I never do, I never do I've, I never do workouts that are more than an well, hour. Well, that's a half. good point because that's the only. There was a, t a point where when I was training for the show, where um, I did get to where sometimes I'd stay at the gym for three hours, but I would break it up with feedings. There you go. So I would train for an hour. Uh, pretty intensely. Then I take a break, have some, get some food in me, drink some liquid, liquid calories, relax a little bit, maybe walk the treadmill for twenty minutes of that. Then boom, get back and do some more work in the gym. Like, but that is like you're talking about the, like the highest level of yeah. training. Like I'm, I'm, this is me at the professional level of trying to maintain this physique. Yeah, if you're, like, if you're playing a game, if you're playing a basketball game, which can last quite a bit, or a football game, then it starts to make sense. But your to normal, normal workouts, not really. It really doesn't make. That big of a difference, kind of waste of uh, of time, unless again you're doing these super long workouts. But if you want to drink something in your workout, try electrolytes. That yeah. that might make a difference, especially if you're low carb or you don't eat a lot of processed foods. I would say before and then during. Uh, LMNT is uh, mm -hmm. something that's hot know, and humid, and you know you're you're losing. It's uh, a good example. Yeah, yeah. So you're sweating profusely. You know that would be but a good. Option. There there is exceptions to the rule here. I know I'm coming out and just like probably hammering a ton of people that are that are probably carrying their jugs around as they're listening to this right now. So I'm not trying to offend everybody, <laughs> but it's it's just one of those things that you know when I when I got into that space and I saw how popular it was, and I'd get clients, and that's like they that were competing, and they'd ask me like, "It's the marketing. It's brilliant. yeah." They're like, "Oh." I dig it. And I'm like, no, don't even worry about so that. There's so many other trend. things that are Think about way more important. It's brilliant marketing because a supplement company knows that if you work out, the one thing that you do consistently is work out. And one of the most effective ways to get your product consumed consistently is to tie it to something that someone does anyways. You ritualize it, right? So every morning when you wake up or right before bed or your workout. So what do they come up with? At first, it was post-workout shake. That's the first time that they ever, you know, really tied it to workouts, and it was brilliant. It sold more protein powder, by the way, selling as a post-workout, uh, you know, supplement. Sold more protein powder than anything else anybody had ever done with protein powder. And then they got smart and said, "Why don't we sell a pre-workout supplement?" And it exploded. Well, what about during the workout? So now you have pre-workout, intra-workout. <laughs> they hit it all now. There's just and if they could come up with a reason to do quarter halfway through, three quarters of the way would. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Front working half right workout. Now. Yeah, yeah. Back yeah. half but workout. Before you do There's these exercises, yeah. do this fluid. Yeah. Leg day workout drink. Yeah. You know, arm day. Don't be yeah. surprised if they get some shit that comes like that. Someone yeah. will figure it out, you know. <laughs> Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.